Hello, in this video we are going to create tables using PHP. In a previous video we looked at fixed number of columns and rows, and in this video we're going to use a slightly different recipe. It's kind of an obscure example, but I think it's kind of interesting. So like I said, we're going to dynamically create a table with PHP. So here's our recipe. So every table uh, begins with an opening table tag, so I'm going to echo out an opening table tag. And I'm going to put a uh, I'm going to put a border on it. This is sloppy, but I am telling you from experience that I think you do, in fact, want a border of one so you can see where it is and where it isn't. And then down at the there's going to be a bunch of stuff that goes in the middle. But at the end, I'm going to echo out a closing table tag, like that. All right. So the repetition part, we're going to use loops to spit out all the rows and the columns. Now, in the previous example I did, which would be a better place to start, I discussed that a little bit more, and we used a nested loop approach, but for this we're going to do it somewhat differently. So I said we're going to use a loop, so I'm going to create a counter, I'm going to call it i, and I'm going to give it a value of 0. That's my starting point, and that's a normal starting point, but uh, my, in my example here I'm going to spit out ASCII values. So these are the numeric uh, values that correspond to letters. So I'm going to start at 40 or so, because a lot of ASCII characters are invisible, so like ones like 0 and 1 and such. So I'll start at 40. Now I'm going to create that loop. So I'll say while i is less than, I need to make, an, again, a somewhat arbitrary decision about how far I want to go with these ASCII characters, I'll go to 200 or so. So remember, these things, these, at, these values are just these kind of... They're the characters associated with numbers. You don't need to understand that particularly well right now. And the last part of this recipe is incrementing my counter. So that's a loop. So I've got an opening table tag before the loop, a closing table tag uh, at the end of the loop, and then my loop is going to be responsible for, for spitting out the TRs and the TDs. So the, this is going to be uh, get a little bit more complicated. So I think I'm going to deal with the TDs before I deal with the TRs, which seems like a bad idea, but the TRs are going to be the more uh, complicated part of this discussion. So I'm going to, for each trip through this loop, let's echo out an opening TD tag and a closing TD tag. And the contents are going to be something that I get from calling a function. The function is called chr, and it takes numbers and it translates them into ASCII characters. Uh, so that's kind of what I want to do, but I'm telling you, that's not going to work correctly. You can't call a function inside of double quotes like that, so instead what I do is I'm going to have to utilize some concatenation. So I close that little string right there, and I press a dot to concatenate. Then I head to the end of the function, I press dot, and I open. So this is a literal opening TD, that's a literal closing TD, and that's a call to a function. And so it's in the first trip through, it's going to spit out whatever ASCII character 40 is, and then 41, and then 42. Now the problem is, how many rows is this table supposed to have? Right? It's supposed to have 10, 20? Because as it is now, it has zero. And so you can kind of understand a little bit what needs to happen. So there needs to be an opening row tag up here somewhere and a closing row tag somewhere down here. But how do we determine where these things are going to go? So I'm going to use a little bit of math and a, and a, a function called mod, or an operator, I guess, better explanation. So I'll say if, oh, I for, oops, I forgot to type an i there. If i, sorry, arm is in a sling, if you're wondering why I'm so clunky. If i mod and so this number here is going to determine how many columns we have so let's just say something like like 10 is equal to 0 then I want to echo out an opening row tag like that so in the first case 40 mod 10 is going to be 0 so when, on the first trip through it's going to open a row and then I just have to figure out when I'm going to close it so down below the TD I'll put an F so if i mod 10 is equal to 9, which would be the end of the row, then I'm going to print out, print out a closing row tag. And so that number of rows and columns is determined by these things here. And this value where you're detecting the end of the row, if that's how you want to define it, is going to be one less than the thing you're modding by. So let's save this thing and 
open it up in a browser and see how it looks. That's my previous example. And I get something like that, which is exactly what we were looking for. It's weird to look at. If you're not sure what I mean by ASCII values, uh, just Google ASCII table. I thought about showing one to you, but I'm not trying to make this video any longer than it is. So this character with an ASCII value of 40 is a left parenthesis, a right parenthesis 41, right? A star or multiplication symbol is 42. And you can see there's your letters, there's your numbers, and then you start getting into some right, more obscure symbols as you get closer to 200. But you can kind of see how that worked out. Let me give you another tip because we are looking at this. I'm going to have a quick look at the page source. You notice how this is this giant line which goes for, I don't know, 1,000 characters or so. One way to make that much more readable is to how about every, just make a decision about where I want the code to break. So how about after I close each row, I put in a forward slash n, which is a new line character. Now that's not going to have any bearing on the finished product. Sorry. Wrong one. I have a bunch of tabs open here. You see, it, it that's what it does to the source code. So the source code still looks horrendous, but it's it's more manageable. And this page here didn't get affected at all. But my source code now has line breaks in it. And it just makes it a lot easier to see what's actually going on, a lot easier to debug it. So that's another approach to creating tables with PHP. Before, I showed you like a nested loop approach to doing it. This way, we use some ifs to mathematically detect the beginning and the end of a row. If you wanted to make changes to this, like if you wanted there to be eight, uh, eight, yes, eight columns, then I would just do this, and I would set that to seven, and I would save that and refresh it. Try and not open up the broken page, and you'll see the effects of that. So kind of a cool technique for creating a table in PHP. So hopefully that helps you to just see the second example of how to dynamically create tables in PHP. It's a very useful skill. You'll run into it at some point. I'm sure of that. Thanks for watching.